Hello, hello. They put me on announcements, so nine o'clock is nine o'clock. I'm not time optimistic. I'm on time. All right. I'm just waiting for everybody to come in and have a seat. So they asked me to do announcements this morning, and um, I have some scripture that I want to read, but while we were busy praying in the prayer room, I was reminded about a vision that was given to the church many, many years ago, and I got quite excited about it. We were in prayer meeting one morning, and I remember having a vision of a car coming into Mouthful Strand. And in this car, there were people fighting, and the mom and dad were not very happy, and there was a lot of dynamic in the car in my vision. And then suddenly, when they hit the, um, okay, there was no golf estate back then, but when they hit the entrance to Malkbos, it was like this reverent awe hit the car and people fell flat. And as they drove through Malkbos, there was just this encounter of God's presence. And then they went out the Danefontein turnoff and all the nonsense came back in the car. And I, and I remember praying, going, God, what is this? And he said, this place will be a place where my presence will reside. This place will be a place where people will come and encounter my presence. And I was at a wedding last night. That's why I look like a new. I was at a wedding last night, and um, somebody said, where do you stay? And I said, in Malkbos Strand. And she said, wow, when we go there, the spirit is so open. We have to work really hard for where we live to get encounters with Jesus like that. And so this morning, I just want to remind you that the ground has already been plowed for us to come into worship and encounter our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. And he longs to meet with you this morning. He longs to embrace you with his goodness and his love. And uh, yeah, so just let's prepare our hearts to encounter Jesus, to encounter the goodness of who he is. Holy Spirit, we want to thank you that you've already ordained many years ago that this will be a place where your presence resides. This will be a place where we will encounter you, we will know you, we will draw close to you, but we will come encounter you as the healer, the deliverer, our friend, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the one who is our solution carrier, the one who releases truth into our hearts. Oh God, as we come into worship, I pray that you will draw us deep into your presence this morning and that there will be rich Holy Spirit encounters in Jesus' name. Amen. So I have some announcements. Sorry, Garth, I'm going to pray a lot. Okay, so the first announcement that I have, this is where everybody switches off because announcements can be a little bit boring, but I have really amazing announcements this morning. So <laughs> knock the person next to you and say, wake up, wake up. There is an evening service tonight. And I really want to encourage you. The last few evening services have been amazing. I love you morning service. It's a great service. The evening service is off the hook exciting. They jump, they get excited, they, it's, it's amazing. So if, if you really want a little bit of a wake up and an encouragement, the evening service at six o'clock tonight, we want to invite you to do that. There is no healing rooms this week. No healing rooms. Healing rooms will start again on the 2nd of May. But if you do need healing, there will definitely be an opportunity to get prayed for afterwards. But um, this Thursday, no healing rooms. And then Garth has an announcement for us on Isaiah. You might have noticed this puzzle last week out in the foyer. We took a photograph of it, well, put it on Facebook. And um, what's up with a puzzle when we're reading the Bible? So because Isaiah has 66 chapters, and you cannot rush through it, you have to thoughtfully, prayerfully pray through them. Um, it's going to take a while to read through the book of Isaiah. We'll probably end by the end of uh, November, maybe the start of December. We'll see how we go along. We haven't put an end date to it because we'll see how we go along. And then um, we don't want you to lose sight of starting and not finishing at the end of the day. So that's why beforehand we prepared a puzzle. And it's based on that beautiful painting um, that Carl Willems painted out there. And it's an image of the suffering servant, one of the strongest themes uh, in the book of Isaiah. And uh, we built up this puzzle out of key scriptures all throughout the book of Isaiah. So starting in the left-hand top corner over here, this is chapter 1 uh, through to chapter 5, and then into chapter 6 through to chapter 11, and so through. So the puzzle actually builds up from this side towards the end of the corner down there at the end of the book. And the idea is that when you start reading from chapter one, that you start saying to yourself, for every chapter I can read, I can have four blocks. And you put it on your fridge, it's a magnetic puzzle, and you start building it, building it, building it. Or the other option is you build the entire puzzle because you can't wait to finish it, and then start looking for the scriptures 
as you read through the chapters. Say, ah, I've been through that chapter. Ah, I've been through that chapter. Something of a reminder right there in the middle of the house, day by day, as you go to the fridge, to say, have I read? Have I prayed through this already? All right. So it's out there. It's an optional extra um, reading together with us, obviously free of charge. Um, but the puzzle itself is 310 Rand. If you'd like that, just um, tell Andrew there at the registration table, the info desk afterwards, and then we'll book them all together by the 5th of May, and we'll get it to you as quick as possible. All right. Okay, because I'm doing announcements. I'm making up the rules. I really want to encourage you. If you are hungry for the Word of God, can you sign up for this Isaiah course? Not just because I'm doing it, but... Garth is one of the most incredible people to unlock the word, and he brings the history alive. So even while we're busy recording videos and, and doing stuff, I'm like, what? Say that again? And I'm learning so much from Garth, and Isaiah is a really prophetic book, so it's really exciting for me to bring a prophetic insight to it. So I'm very excited about the combination of us working together, and I have found that it's just unlocked new truths for me, and I've done Isaiah a lot. Um, just working with God. So I want to encourage you. I think it's going to be such an exciting time for us in the book. Okay, next announcement. Ladies, I'm speaking to you. I'd like you to take out your diaries because you all carry a diary to church. And I'd like you to mark the 15th of May, please. We are going to have a worship evening and we're going to come together as women in community and to connect and to really just experience the presence of God and enjoy each other's company. So that is on the 15th of May. However, there are going to be catering dynamics. So if you could let us know if you're coming, um, you can go to the, the information desk outside on your way out. Just put your name down there so that we know that you're going to be here and we can cater for you. But I really want to invite you to come into a place where we get to come together as women. We get to come together as a, a community, as the body of Christ, as women holding up shields of faith and worship together. Um, and come into his presence. So that's going to be taking place on the 15th, if you can sign up for that. And then this is also a very important announcement. Okay, you're all listening. I've had many people ask me, so when are we doing Hearing God's Voice? And I was going to push Hearing God's Voice to quite a while, and actually I've had so many people ask, the pastor included. So um, therefore, we're going to be doing it for the month of May. So it's quite soon. It's within two weeks' time we're going to be starting. It's going to take place on a Monday night because it's the only night in the church that nothing takes place. So it'll be Monday night, 7 sharp, as you can see. I'm very sharp. 7 o'clock we'll start. And we're going to go through how to hear God's voice. This is a foundation course that needs to be taken if you want to do the prophetic courses afterwards, unpacking what is a watchman, what is an intercessor, what is, the, this is the foundation one to be built on over that. So if you would like to take part in that course, please, again, you need to register for that course. Um, if you can get your name to Monique or on, at the information desk, that would be great. There is a fee of 100 Rand to cover the content and the material. Those booklets or the books need to be printed. So really want to encourage you to come into that um, if you're excited to hear God's voice. Children are very welcome. Okay, I really want to say that. Our kids hear God's voice. And so if you're feeling like you've got a discerner in your home or you've got somebody who is on the space of wanting to understand how to hear God, please will you bring your children um, I really have an excitement in my spirit that God is doing something massive in our youth. And when they hear God, we're going to see the spirit move. So I'm going to open up in prayer again, and then we're going to go into worship. Holy Spirit, as I said earlier, thank you that you are such a good God. And I want to thank you for all the, the activity in this body. I want to thank you for the opportunities that we have as a congregation. But God, we want to come and we want to say, despite the ministries, despite the opportunities, despite everything that is going on, we want to quieten our hearts before you. We want to lift you up, Lord. And we want to come and we want to bestow our love on your feet, God. We want to bestow our love towards you. And we want to declare holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. As, as we lift you this morning, God, would you lift our eyes that we may lock gaze with you and that we may be drawn into Christ's likeness like more and more like never before. We want to pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand up together. As we rise to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind For we know there is peace within your presence 
We speak Jesus. We rise to speak the name of Jesus. So every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope.
Fix my eyes on what's above, where angels dance around your prison sky. I will become what I behold to know you, Lord, as I am fully known. Let's sing that again. I fix my eyes. Yes, I fix my eyes on what's above, where angels dance around your present sky. I will become what I behold to know you, Lord, as I am fully Oh 
Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you were raised to life again. What a powerful name. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. You're the joy rising in my soul, lifting up my all, Lord Jesus, you're my all in all, you're the peace resting deep in me, anchoring my feet, Lord Jesus. joy. You're the joy rising in my soul, lifting up my own. Lord Jesus, you're my all in all. And you're the peace resting deep in me, anchoring my own. Lord Jesus, all in heaven
that as we open our hearts to you this morning, that the very needs, the very aching, the longing for more of you would be fulfilled only by you. Thank you that nothing can can touch those spaces in our lives where you touch. Thank you that you alone are God. Thank you that you alone, Holy Spirit, have access into the very depths of our being pouring out that peace and that love and that joy that belongs to the Father, making it ours. And this morning as we we rest in this moment, and it is a moment of our lives that we rest, we ask that we would be filled with your presence, that we would be filled with your love, that we would be filled with a peace that passes all understanding, that we would be delighting ourselves in your presence. Nothing more important for us this day than to experience and to know and to know and to know your presence and as we behold you this morning as we see you high and lifted up majestically above all of the heavenly beings majestically above all of creation we come and say Lord we want to become what we behold we want to become like our Savior touch us we pray this morning in Jesus' name. And if you'd like to greet somebody near you, you're welcome to do that this morning. Just while we were, while we were in our time of worship, a word of knowledge came and and just to explain what a word of knowledge is for those who don't know what a word of knowledge is a word of knowledge is when the Lord reveals to someone in the congregation um, something that is taking place and the word of knowledge this morning is is that there may be somebody here who whose kidneys are problematic and so I'm going to open that up to you if it's your kidneys that need praying for there will be prayer for you this morning after the service um And if it is your kidneys, then you better know the Lord knows about them and he's bringing that revelation to us this morning, coming and saying, I know it's your kidneys. We don't know whose kidneys they are, but he does. And he's saying this morning that there's a healing for those kidneys. All right, and and as we we bring our tithes and our offerings, I'd ask the stewards to come. I'm gonna ask God to carry on playing. And if if you're in a space where you normally pray for people's healing, I'd like you to just take a moment and pray for those kidneys. Where you're sitting as we take, that we would pray that the Lord would touch and he would heal whosever kidneys they are.
Thank you, Garth. I think the children are going to leave us. I saw that they try to get the money bags to go around a second time there at the back. So we'll, we'll let the children go out and we won't send the bags around again. I, I know that you you prepared you've prepared your hearts to to hear the Lord this morning. Um, we've we've been in this series of being filled with the Spirit, and I hope that you're excited about being filled with the Spirit. I hope that there is an expectation in your heart that you God's not going to pass me by. All right, God's not going to pass me by, um, and and I don't have to put on my special. I nearly said my special hat, but I won't say that um, because <laughs> Stian's sitting right here. <laughs> but, but I don't need to put my special whatever it is on to be able to get an anointing from the Lord. Um, but, but this morning that, that he wants to fill you. That is his desire. So this, this morning as we, we, we continue, this is, this is a, a, one of those sermons going from one series, mini series into another. All right, so you've got, to, you've got to stay with me all the way through so that you get where we're going in the future. But we've been talking about walking in the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit, requires coming into agreement with the Spirit. We saw that from Amos. All right, can two people walk together unless they're in agreement? Answer, no. No, you can't. You will walk together for a while, and then you will have a disagreement, and you will take different paths. So, in the, in the exact same sense, we're, we're asking ourselves, are we in agreement with Holy Spirit? That's, that's really what we, we've got to ask ourselves. Am I in agreement with Him? Because if I want to walk with Him, then I need to be in a space where I, I'm saying, I'm agreeing with you. Because He's not going to come into agreement with me unless I'm in agreement with Him. All right. um, we, we often want to get God onto our plan. You know how we do that? We sort of say, well, Lord, you know, we've got this plan in the church, and we would like you to bless it, all right? Because we think it's really good. Um, God just kind of must look at us and say, no, I won't say what he, I think he would say, because he probably wouldn't say that. But, but coming into agreement, coming into agreement with Holy Spirit means that we need to know a little bit about what he's doing so that we can be doing what he's doing. And... and um, a couple of the songs this morning, have you may recognize why we're singing those songs. Thank you for those who've written them. Um, but we're making statements like the more we behold him, the more we become like him. Okay? Um, that we're looking and saying, Holy Spirit, what are you busy with? So I'm going to ask you this morning, when you got up this morning and you said, Holy Spirit, what do you got for the day? What, what, what are you going to be doing today? Because remember, God is always working. We get to sleep every now and again, and, and we get to have some downtime, and we, we get to do some recreational time. God is always working. Holy Spirit is always working. So, so what are you about? Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says, when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth, which is what we are asking Him to do right now. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. And now here's the key. He will glorify me. That's what he's doing. Yes, he's going to teach you, and he's going to guide you into all truth, but he is busy glorifying Jesus. Did you wake up this morning thinking, I'm going to be glorifying Jesus this morning? Because that's what Holy Spirit is doing. If I'm going to walk in the Spirit, I'm going to be declaring Jesus is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He, he is all majesty and all glory and all wisdom and all honor and all power and all riches and all wisdom. And all of everything, is he, that is who He is. You are worthy, says the Word, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. You're worthy. You're worthy of, of all of the honor and, and the glory and the power. 
It's the Holy Spirit. Although he's God, his job right now is to glorify Jesus on the earth, in and through us. In fact, Jesus made a, a timing statement. Sometimes we, we use these phrases. Um, this is from John chapter 7. On, on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believe in him were to receive. Future tense. For as yet the Spirit did not, had not been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. It's a timing thing. The moment, the moment that Jesus is glorified, just think about it for a, a, a second. Jesus is crucified, and your sins are, are, are punished if you're born again. Your sins were punished on the cross, and your punishment was taken in full. And, and he gives up his spirit. He dies, and he goes into death. And death, I, I, I can never get this picture out of my mind. Imagine when Jesus rocked up in death and switched on the lights. Imagine it for a moment. Because re remember, um, we're, we're, no, we won't go there. But, but he switches on the lights and, and, and he says, all right, all of you of faith, let's go. And death can do nothing about it. And the word says that he took captivity captive. And he, he had this train of all the captives and they went up into the heavenly realm. And all of those of faith went with him. And there was nothing that sin and death could do about it. And, and they entered into the presence of the Father and the Father said, at my right hand. At my right hand. You rule my kingdom. You're the majestic one. You're the only one who is glorified to this position. Everybody else is below you. Every part of creation is below you. Every spiritual being is below you. All right? And, and so Jesus is raised up and he's, he's seated at the, heavenly, uh, the right hand of the Father. And then Holy Spirit is sent. And then Holy Spirit is sent. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. And so he, he comes along and he says to them, uh, don't leave town. Why? That which I've been speaking about all along, that, that river of living water, that Holy Spirit who's coming, who's going to fill you and he's, he's going to pop you, man. You're just going to have a river bl blowing out of the center of you. He's, he's still got to come. Don't leave town. And so on the day of Pentecost, when all of those men and women, remember, um, and these were all with one accord, devoted themselves to pray together with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. They were all up there in that, that one room. And, and suddenly the Spirit comes upon them and he floods them with what? The glory of Jesus. And what do they hear them speaking in all those languages? The wonders of God, the glory of God. There's something that just bubbles out of them. And so honoring Jesus, glorifying Jesus, according to this is doing what he said, stay in town. Doesn't seem very spiritual, does it? Stay in town. And you will receive the promise of the Father. And so we've got to come to this place where we realize that when I do what Jesus tells me to do in the power of the Spirit, Jesus gets glorified. He's the one that's lift, lifted up. And when I, when I do what he tells me to do, it's because I trust him. I trust him. I trust him not just because I say he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords because I read it in Scripture. I trust him because he's my shepherd. He's my provider. He knows where the still water is. He knows where the green pastures are. 
And he leads me and he guides me into the Father's will. And so when I come along, and I, I, we, we could sing this morning. We didn't sing it this morning, but we sing it often. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Hmm? Nice song. But if I don't want to glorify Jesus, he's not coming. Then I'm just singing. And then I want Holy Spirit for some other reason other than the glory of the majesty of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Then I'm, I'm kind of in that space where I want, I want Jesus for maybe some healing power. Because that would be great, wouldn't it? Maybe, maybe I want um, Jesus because I, I haven't spoken in tongues yet and I'd like to speak in tongues. Come Holy Spirit. Come, I, I, I need to... I need to be seen as a, a good Christian because, you know, good, good, good Christians, what do we good Christians do? We, I don't know. But I have to come into agreement with Holy Spirit that Jesus is worthy of all honor and glory and power, that Jesus is my King, He is my Lord, He is my Savior, and I want everybody to know that. I want everybody to know he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You see, I can't be a clandestine Christian. I can't be the Christian that kind of prays and expect Holy Spirit to empower me because he wants Jesus glorified. And so now Holy Spirit, he, as a, he comes and he He's glorifying Jesus, and the moment you say, I want to glorify Jesus, you're in agreement with him. Now you're in agreement. Now the two can walk together. So we, we come along and we say, Holy Spirit, would you, would you fill me with whatever is necessary for me to glorify Jesus? He says, oh, I can do that. That's, that's my purpose, whatever it is. And so glorifying Jesus facilitates or opens the way for me to, to have more of Holy Spirit in my life. Why? Because he wants to glorify Jesus and he's willing to come in and to do, to do exactly that. You know, the, go and have a look at the theology. We do not have a theology that separates Holy Spirit from the glory of Jesus. He's always there. We've separated Holy Spirit into, we want, we want a Holy Spirit touch. We want the Holy Spirit to do this. We want the Holy Spirit to do that. And, and nowhere in Scripture is there ever a separation in the Godhead. Nowhere in Scripture is there ever a time when we can say, well, I just want, I just want um, words of knowledge. I just want um, prophetic words. I just want miracles. No, I can't do that because it's got to be connected to the glory of Jesus. When I want it for me, who's being glorified? Me. And so Jesus said, if you love me, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Notice he doesn't say, keep my commandments and it will prove you love me. He says, if you truly love me, you're going to keep my commandments anyway. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. And here's the key. You know him. For he dwells with you, and he shall be in you. And this, this coming along and saying, you know him. The disciples knew Jesus like we know each other. Because they were present with Jesus. And Jesus is saying, you know me, and you're going to know him in the exact same way. You're going to know him in the exact same way. And so when, when we read, do not, do not get drunk with wine because it leads to debauchery, but keep on being filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. It's an ongoing knowing. It's an ongoing knowing. So just think about this. When you first get married, you think you know the person you're living with. Oh, you're living with a person you don't know. That's the truth because you never lived with them before. 
All right? So, so now you get married and, 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 and you start walking this road together. And the more you walk down the road together, the more you get to know each other. Fun. Exciting. Testing. Hmm? Yeah? All of those things. Why? Because we're getting to know each other. We thought we knew each other. I, I, I chuckle often, premarital counseling, sit down, and I have two people. They know everything there is to know because now they're getting married and they're... <laughs> yeah, some of us have got grayer hair than others. And the Bible says that's wisdom. <laughs> I'll take it, all right? Um, yeah, but there's a getting to know. And so the one we're getting to know is holy. He's holy. And we're getting to know what it's like to live with someone who's holy. In other words, he's set apart. He only has one purpose, God's purpose. That's what holy means, to be set apart. I'm never going to get Holy Spirit to be on my agenda He, he will never, ever just say, okay, Rob, we'll do your thing this week. No. He is holy. He's set apart just to do the will of the Father. And so this morning, as you, you're here, and you're born again, I'm, I'm presuming you're born again. If, you, if you're not, when they come and pray for the healing, you can come up here, and we'll, we'll have a talk. Um, why are we there? Well, because Jesus had your sins imputed on him and he was punished and you were forgiven. Isn't that awesome? He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And by his wounds, we've been healed. And our being forgiven and, and, and made holy, remember what the Bible says, your, your, your status has changed. You're no longer a, a sinner, you're a holy one. That's a whole series, okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about, go onto the internet, you'll find it. You're not a sinner anymore. You're a holy one. Why? Because your sin was taken off you and it was given to Jesus and his righteousness was taken from him and put on you. Why? Because there's no sin against your account anymore. So you're a holy one. You're set apart for God. That's what you are. You're set apart for God. And you know, before you were, before you were born again, you, you couldn't not sin. And just because your sins are forgiven, it doesn't mean that you don't sin anymore. Why? Well, because, you know, we, we would be in that cycle. Many of us got into that cycle of, I sin, I confess, I get forgiven, I sin again. I sin, I confess, uh, I'm forgiven, and I sin again. Because we're trying to do it in our strength. But when Holy Spirit comes in, and he comes to empower you, and he comes to make you like him, he makes you in right standing with yourself. Now, I'm going to say that first, right standing with yourself. Why? Because the person we have the most problem with for our sin is actually ourselves. You see, if you had a problem with God, you just wouldn't sin. If you really believed that it was a problem with God. But we have a problem with ourselves. So when, when I sin, it's about me satisfying me, fulfilling me, doing the me thing. And, and the Holy Spirit comes in and he says, no, no, no. You need to get right with you, Rob. You need to get to a space where you say, you, you agree with me that this isn't the way you're going to live. You need to get right with your brother, your sister, your neighbor. Because what does our sin do? My sin affects you, doesn't it? Yeah, it affects you. And at some point, it might affect everybody else. Your sin might affect just those. You think just you and those are written, but it affects all. And then ultimately, our sin affects our relationship with God. I don't know if you've noticed, but... but um, when I have sinned, God doesn't go away. I just don't feel like going to God. 
And are you the same? You can nod or you can or don't. Maybe you don't sin. Right? And I like that laugh. It was honest. All right? So, so when the Holy Spirit comes, Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And listen to this. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. And, and, and this power that, that Holy Spirit comes into our lives is to make you a witness. A witness of what? Jesus. And the, 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 the grammar here is quite interesting. You re shall receive power. It's a future middle tense. It's, it's almost a command that it will says, you must receive power and you must be a witness. It's not, it's not an optional extra. So you must receive the Holy Spirit and you must become a witness um, as a result of that. And so it requires an action on our part. Holy Spirit is there, but you don't automatically become a witness. You can automatically become a back. You know, a blabbermouth. You can talk all the talk, but people eventually watch the walk and not the talk. And so becoming a witness is actually me becoming more and more like Jesus. And I like this commentator, I give him credit, um, Keck is his name. Uh, he says, the, the, the close connection between the Spirit's power and the witness to Jesus, observing that what is true of those first apostolic witnesses is still true to witnessing today, the less Jesus is the core of our witness, the less power we have in our lives. And so we come along and we say, Lord, it's my desire to, to live a life that glorifies Jesus. And Holy Spirit, I can't do it on my own. If I do it on my own, I go into that cycle of sin, confess, forgive, sin, confess. I, I need to come, and, and I need you to come and to empower me to become that witness. And the greatest witness we have to Jesus is when we imitate him, when we become like him. Isn't that the greatest witness? When the world gets to see Jesus in you and in me, that's a, that's a true witness. And Jesus, Jesus said some really heavy, heavy things when you read them in this kind of context. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and greater works than these he will do. Because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this is what this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So when you and I come along and, and we say, Holy Spirit, I, I need to live this life that witnesses the glory of Jesus. It's very different to me saying, Holy Spirit, come and give us power to change milk boss. It's kind of like the other side of the field. When I'm coming and saying, Lord, the only way Melkbos is going to see your glory is if they see it in my life. Wow. Well, where else are they going to see it? We're painting the building. It's looking good, eh? Yeah? Lights are a bit bright, but anyway. Um, but that's not glory. That's not glory. We could put up, put up stained glass window in that wall. Anybody think we should put a window in that wall? Okay, all right. We could put a stained glass window in there. Th that would just be a stained glass window in the wall. That's not glory. Where's the glory of God going to be seen? In the people of God. In the people of God. And so Holy Spirit both leads and guides us into a lifestyle, into a lifestyle that prepares us to be like Jesus. 
in order for Jesus to be glorified. Paul writes to Titus and he says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people, that's us, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live life self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, waiting for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are the living evidence of the glory of God. It should excite you that God chooses that his, his spirit would live inside of you. Yes, we are broken earthen vessels, but we have this incredible treasure, this glory within us. And he wants to be seen in the world so that Jesus can be lifted up, so that Jesus can be glorified. And, and part of that, that learning how to, to live that life is obviously the Bible, Obviously the Bible, and, and you know, we, we, we know from 2 Peter 1.20 that the Bible is, isn't a book written just by, by men. I know there were 36 different, I think more than 36, but at least 36 writers, but the author of the Bible is Holy Spirit. He's the author. So if, if you could just think of it like this, um, if you want to know what the Holy Spirit says about living the Jesus-glorified life, he, he's kind of written you a whole book. And it's, it's all in there. We don't need to go to YouTube. We really don't. We're, we're, uh, very few of us, very few of us re read through the Bible in a year. Very few of us, as God said, we're going to study the book of Isaiah. It's going to take seven months. We need to come to the Word and we have to say, Lord, you're the author of this book. You're teaching us how we can, how we can live. You need to shift our thinking. And we'll look, talk about that in a moment. But we need to put your Word in our hearts, in our minds, so that you, Holy Spirit, can lead us through the Word. And the, to Timothy, Paul writes, hold fast to the pattern of sound Word which you've heard from me. Remember, you didn't have a Bible, all right? You heard it verbally. In faith and in love, which are in Christ Jesus, the good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. So you need to take the word and you need to put it in your heart and you need to hear his voice and you need to get the two together, the word of God, the voice of God. Why? Because he lives inside of you. He leads and guides you. You need to have both of these. I always say that the, the two railway lines that we, we run our life on, the word and the voice of the spirit. And by the way, they never, ever conflict. What you hear in the spirit is what is written in the Word. You ever get a word that that's conflicts with Scripture? It's not the Holy Spirit. Or it's, it's a very unholy spirit. Or it's just you. Whichever one you want. And so these two guardrails, as it were, of the voice of the Spirit and the Word of God um, coming and they're, they're guiding us. Paul says to Timothy, all Scripture is, is uh, given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete or mature, thoroughly equipped for every good word. So I want to challenge you. We need to get into the word of God. If we want to know what Holy Spirit is saying on any topic, yes, we need to hear his voice, but we need to have the word of God inside of us continually so that we can measure what we're hearing, that we, we don't have to run off and say, um, who am I going to go? Bev, Bev, I, I think I have this word. Do you think it's in line with the Bible? No. I should know what the Word of God says. And I should have it almost uh, embedded inside of me. And then what are, one of the things that we put the Word inside of us for is for exactly what I'm trying to do with you this morning. I'm trying to change your thinking. Why? Why? Because as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. And if I think that, that I just need Holy Spirit so that I can speak in tongues or cast out demons or do whatever it is, then I need to change my thinking. 
I need to get in line with ho what Holy Spirit is saying to me. And by the way, when you're walking in, in, in step with glorifying Jesus, you probably will cast out demons, and you probably will speak in tongues and, and, and see miracles. But that's not the objective. The objective is, Lord, I want him glorified. And I don't know if you know this, but you, your inside thinking, you all know this, sorry. Just too much information you know that whatever is going on inside of you affects what's going on outside. That's it. You can say, I'm thinking happy thoughts. I'm thinking happy thoughts. And everybody knows you're not. All right? I'm happy. You, you've, you get that often. Don't question me, you know? If you're not thinking glory on the inside, there's no glory on the outside. There's none. And guess what? Everybody sees it. When you're thinking glory on the inside, there's glory on the outside. And guess what? Everybody sees it. And so we need to come along, and, and the, I, I've preached a series on thinking about what you're thinking about. You can go and have a look at that series if you want to. Um, but, but we need to come to this place where we say, hang on a second. How am I thinking about being filled with the Spirit? What is my thinking on being filled with the Spirit? And do I have some wrong thoughts about this? Well, then we get told then take those thoughts captive. Take those thoughts captive. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God to pull down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bring every thought into captivity to obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You see, we need to come along and we need to have, ask ourselves this question. What is governing my thinking? What, what, what's going on inside of me all the time? question I would ask myself is, how much did I even think about Jesus today? Because that's me getting real with me. I'm not asking you how much. I'm saying I need to question my own thinking because whatever I'm thinking is going to affect the way I'm going to live it out. And you do know that the greatest battle that we face, spiritual battle, soppy copy. Yeah, it's in your head. Where do we have thoughts of fear? Failure, anger, resentment, bitterness, greed. Lust, disappointment. I can go on and on. Turning around in our heads. And the enemy is standing there saying, oh, let's add a little bit of this to this concoction. Let's add a little bit of that. And, and here the, the injunction to us is, you take that thought captive. It's not Holy Spirit's job. It's yours. You need to be able to stop and say, Hang on, is this, a, is this thought in agreement with Holy Spirit? Can I walk with him with this kind of thinking? Answer, no. Why? I'm actually in agreement with hell. That's what I am. We've got to say it as it is. When I'm walking around with all those negative thoughts and I'm agreeing with, with all the darkness that goes on, you know, we, we watch the news. And we're going to take our five pennies and we don't know what we're going to do with them. Whoa. No. Who am I coming into agreement with? The world. And we, can, we need to take those thoughts captive and say, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to believe these lies. I'm not going to believe these things, even if what I see around me. But I'm going to believe what you, Holy Spirit, tell me about Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, 
whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. If there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate these things on these things. The things which you've learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. There's a choice that we need to make in this adjustment. I need to choose what I'm thinking about. In a world where we bombarded constantly by every little flickering light and every thought, and you can, you can spend... You could spend a whole day, you know, let's take out our whole day, we could spend a whole day doing this. New thought, new thought, new thought. Until I'm dead. Because I've allowed all of those things to get in my mind. Or we stop it and we say, hang on a second, Lord. I need to change my thinking. I need to get in line with what your word says. I need to get in line with what the Holy Spirit says. Practicing his presence is what we're going on to in our next series. Living with Holy Spirit. But there's a first that we need to get past today. Today is like stepping over a hurdle before we can practice the presence. This is what Hebrews chapter 5 says, For by this time you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracle of God. And you've come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes, partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full age or mature. I prefer mature than full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And so we come along and we realize that there's a practice that we need to get into. You have to use whatever it is that the Lord is speaking to you. And we need to come to a place where we say, Holy Spirit, I need to know you. Just as Jesus said, you know me, I need to know you. And that knowing is not the knowing that I, I, know, I know quite a bit about M Margaret Thatcher. I used to love Margaret Thatcher. Still like her. Or read, just try to understand what makes a woman like that tick. You know, um, what's her worldview? How did she get to be the way she was? And so you may not have liked her, but, but I like Margaret Thatcher. And I don't know her. I read lots of books about her read commentaries of other people about her, but I don't know. I can't ever know if she's dead. I can't have a conversation with her. So I can't actually know her. I can know about her. And when, when, the, when, when Jesus says that you know him, he's not speaking about reading the books about him. He's speaking about having a conversation, getting to know you. Was it, was it the king and I, was it? Getting to know you, I won't sing it. Getting to know all about you, you know, getting to like you, all of those things that go with it. Um, so there, there is a space where we, we've got to say, I need to actually get to know you, Holy Spirit. Why? Because you are knowable. You're knowable. You're not hiding yourself. The problem is, is me. And, and obviously my best resource of getting to know you is the Bible, but I actually need to spend time with you. I need to spend time listening to you. I need to spend time speaking to you. Um, and obviously, I probably need to spend time obeying you when I do hear you 
speak to me. And so this morning, I, I challenge you, do you know him? I'm not asking you, do you know about him? Have you heard a few sermons about him? Um, have you watched a few YouTubes about him? Do you know him? You see, some of you think you know me. But you don't. Julie's still trying to know me. <laughs> Battling. Thank the Lord, only he knows me. But do you know him? We sing these songs of intimacy and of, of, of love, but, but, but have, you, have you shifted your mindset to know him? Because again, I, I quote John 17, which we've been in and out of in this series. Jesus spoke these words, Lift up, he, lifting up his, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may, may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you've given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. This is eternal life, that they, that they know you. And this is that same knowing. Ginosko, it doesn't mean that they read the book. Because there are many people who read the book and they know the book and they can quote the book, but they don't know the Lord. They don't know Holy Spirit. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. Now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Jesus, can you see the glory that is necessary? Can you see it's about God's glory? And he wants you to know him. And if you don't know him, then the, the enemy has effectively robbed you of the greatest gift that God has already provided for you, knowing him. And if you think that that's off the wall, do you remember the first oak? Remember the guy before there was a chick on the earth? You know, remember Adam, Eve? They heard God coming in the cool of the evening. They knew God was coming. They had intimacy with God. God wants that intimacy with you. God wants you to know when he walks in the room. Think about that. God wants you to know when he whispers in your ear. God wants you to know that you can trust him. God doesn't withhold himself. He's not a hidden God. He's not a God who's somewhere far off that says, try and find me. No. He lives in you. He's chosen to live inside of you. He's chosen to make himself known to you. And he says, you can know me like you know yourself. You can know me. And so we get challenged. Jesus came to reestablish God's glory on earth. That's what he came to do. And he promised us that when Holy Spirit comes, he would be in us so that he could teach us to glorify Jesus on the earth. When we get there on that day, we're going to sing. When, you, when the trumpet blasts, we're going to see him. We're going to rise if we're still alive or we'll be with him. And it's going to be glorious and we will glorify him. And every knee will bow, even those who refuse today. And every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And there will be a bowing before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But before that, whilst we're on earth, he, the Lord says, you can glorify me. You can bring glory to my name. Just as the, Jesus made it so clear, he came to glorify the Father. That's what he came for. And now we ask ourselves the question, 
Is glorifying Jesus part of my thinking? Because if I'm going to walk with Holy Spirit, and I can't walk, so if I'm going to walk with Holy Spirit there, I have to be in agreement with him. We can ask God, Lord, send us miracles. Lord, do this. Lord, do that. Lord, do everything. And Holy Spirit says, well, just come walk in agreement with me. And let's glorify Jesus. And by the way, this isn't, this isn't for, for the pastors or the, the ministry leaders to do their job. This is for every born-again believer. And remember, when your child gives their heart to Jesus, Holy Spirit comes to live in your child. They don't get the children's version, the illustrated version. No, they have God, Holy Spirit, who desires to glorify Jesus. Have you ever listened to little kids who, who've given their hearts to Jesus walking around the house? Have you listened to their songs? Have you? It, it, it's quite enlightening how they will just sing praises, they will just declare things. Sometimes your kids get a little bit too spiritual for you when they say things in public. Why? They, not, they have no inhibitions like we do. Well, you know, um, is, is this for, for, for uh, bankers? Yes. Is this for housewives? Yes. Well, what about professional sports people? Yes. This is for every born-again believer. You're given a stage to bring glory to the name of Jesus. And where you are, that's just your stage. I'm sorry it's covered up, but it would be nice if we could see our, our vision statement of thousands of people going out every single day to glorify Jesus, no matter where they go, uh, just being there. And so my challenge to you this morning is, obviously, we all getting to know him more intimately. That is... It, we, we all start somewhere. But I want to ask you this. Is glorifying Jesus on your bucket list? Is it even a heart's desire? Was it something that you've, you've kind of been thinking about or processing before this morning? And I'm sure it was. But this morning, I, I want to give you permission, biblical permission. You may glorify Jesus. You won't upset God. You may. We're, the one thing we know when we're walking with the Holy Spirit, he says, guess what? We're going to glorify Jesus. And then we say, not at work, Lord. Can we, can we do it in church on Sunday morning? And I promise I'll clap. No, sorry, guys. I know you're Baptists. We don't do the clap thing very well. Um, but but I, 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 if you walk with me, then we walk in agreement. And if you walk with me, it's a continuous walking. It's a continuous filling. It's not I walk with you today and not tomorrow. I walk with you on Sunday, but Monday, no. And so the challenge that I leave with you is, would you go home and check your bucket list and say, I want to put glorifying Jesus onto my bucket list? Because the things that we set our minds on, we normally do. The things that we take those thoughts and we say, this is, this is what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I don't know, maybe I'm going to get old gracefully. No, I probably will anyway. Um, I'm going to glorify Jesus in my place of work. Or maybe we start, I'm going to glorify Jesus in my home. 
That, that would be a good start. Okay, Holy Spirit, you can have home. <laughs> but we've got to decide. It's a thought process that we've got to decide. This is what I'm supposed to be doing as a Christian. If, if it's not what I'm supposed to be doing, then, then I, or if I don't believe that it's what I'm supposed to be doing, I will never do it. It will never be a priority. And then I will never be able to walk in the Spirit. So the next part of, of this series is, so how do I walk in the Spirit? We need to get over this hurdle before we start walking there. Because you're not going to be walking in the Spirit if you haven't decided that I'm going to glorify Him in my life. You, he will still be in you, but you will not be filled with Him. You will be filled with whatever else you've decided to be filled with, whatever else is your priority, whatever else is going on in your mind. So, Father, we want to pray this morning that you'd give us And just wait a moment. Thank you that you speak into our hearts. Your word says that when you speak to our hearts, we know we are your children. Would you speak the truth to us, even in this moment? Thank you that we've come to encounter you. Thank you as a, as a body of believers, we seek to know your voice. And so I pray right now in this building, Holy Spirit, that you would speak individually to every heart. that you would remind them of their being the children of God, that you would remind them that you live inside of them, that you would remind them that they do hear your voice. And for some of you, you're going to make a decision this morning, and I know you are, I'm not speaking to everybody, but there's some of you who are making a decision. I'm going to glorify Jesus. And I want to pray into that. So Holy Spirit, I want to pray that you will fill and flood every decision to glorify Jesus. I pray that you will come with a, a rushing, mighty wind. I pray that you will flood into every place of fear and doubt I pray that you will come and wash out every bit of embarrassment and every bit of shame that stands in the way of glorifying Jesus and those who are making the decision today. Father, I pray that you will flood them with the peace that passes all understanding and that there will be a rising up of the joy of the Lord, that there will be a rising up of the newness of your spirit flooding those areas of our bellies where you dwell so that there may be a bursting out of the glory of Jesus, that it wouldn't just be a few words, but it would be a flood, a river, even as Ezekiel 47 says, that that river will flow and it will go downstream and down the, the way into the city and into the country and that there will be life wherever your children go. Thank you, Lord, that we do not go in in our own strength, but we go in the power and the flow of your spirit. So I pray everyone who makes that decision, Lord, that you will touch them now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together. Stand and sing. As I fix my eyes on what's above where angels dance Around your presence, God, and I will become what I behold to know you, Lord, as I am fully known. 
you to come up. There'll be folk who'll pray for healing over here. There'll be the ministry team on this side to pray for anything else that you would want to be prayed for. And the Lord bless you. May He keep you in the wonder of His presence. May you know the, the fullness of His fellowship. And may you delight in His voice. May you walk in the power that we sing of. May you walk in the glory of Jesus. Amen and amen. I will become 